nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to be with you. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to be with you.
Praise God, praise God, praise God. Glory to God, glory to God. Well, welcome everybody. We greet you in Jesus' joy. And this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, glory to God. Even as the Psalm just declared, he is God and we worship him, glory to God. As we've gathered around this medium of technology today to give the Lord name praise and to glorify him and to lift him up, amen. I want to ask if you would just take a moment and just put your hands together and let's bless the name of the Lord for this new day. I don't care. For the new day of the Lord, the Bible says, from the rising of the sun, amen, to the setting of the same. And the faithfulness of God is God has brought us through, amen, the night, amen, and caused us to awaken to and to arise to the breaking of a brand new day, the light of a new day, amen. So God is worthy of the praise. He is worthy of the glory. He is worthy of the honor, hallelujah. And we give God praise in this brand new day. Amen. The Bible declares that this is the day that the Lord have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. And I don't know about you, but I make a decision to give God praise, to rejoice in this day. Amen. No matter what, praise God the day, um, the, the yesterday has been, uh, but today, we give God praise for this brand new day, amen. And I want you, those of you that are watching us, we greet you um, in Jesus' joy, those that are viewing us live by Facebook, amen. And even those that will view this, uh, re this service by, by replay, we greet you in Jesus' joy, amen, in this brand new day. We purpose to give God praise, hallelujah, and to glorify his name, amen. And we're going to get started this morning in our service. I'm going to ask uh, Mother uh, Ethel Davis if she would lead us in prayer this morning. And as she prays, glory to God, those of you who are on the line, amen, and watching us, amen, if you would pray as well, wherever you are, amen, as the word of prayer is going up. The Bible says men ought to always pray and not faint. And it's always a good time, amen, to pray and to declare the name of the Lord. So I want you to just pray, amen, along as Mother Davis leads us in prayer. Hallelujah. 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 To God be the glory. God, our Father, we come to you this morning, Heavenly Father. We come, O oh God, because we know that you are faithful and you will hear our prayers. We come to you, Heavenly Father, because we thank you this morning because you are a faithful God. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for our leaders, Apostle Jimmy C. Thomas, Jr., we thank you this morning for prophetess Natalie, because where they are, Heavenly Father, the spirit of the Lord is there. And in the spirit of the Lord, we have liberty, Father God, to move in you. Father, we thank you this morning, Heavenly Father, that you are so faithful to us. No matter what we see all around us, Father God, we know still you are faithful. For Heavenly Father, we have only to go into your word and to know, Father God, that even from the beginning, Heavenly Father, you were there. So we come to you this morning, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, and our Master, O oh God. God, we will praise you in front of the idols, O oh God. No matter how many idols that man sets up, no matter the idols that are set up in other countries who do not believe in you, but we will give you glory this morning. We will give you honor this morning and we will give you praise. And Father, we will bless your holy name for you are worthy of all the glory, all of the honor and all of the praise. Because God, we thank you this morning that you are faithful. Even in the beginning, Heavenly Father, when you made the heavens and the earth, oh God, and then Father God, 
you stepped down from out of the time into time. And you got down to the dust of the earth and you created man and you created him in your own image, Father God. Male and female created you them. And oh God, we thank you, Father God, that when they sinned, you were faithful, God, because you could see down through the years, God, all we have to do is go to your word and see how faithful you have been for years and years, God. You've been a faithful God. And you saw that man would sin, and so when he sinned, you said to the woman that the snake would bruise her heel and her heel would bruise his head. Father God, because you know you were going to send your son, Father God, and when you chose a people that should have carried out your word, and you did wonders for them, O oh God. You brought them from out of the hands of Pharaoh. You took care of them, God, and you watched over them, but they still didn't listen to you. But God, you were still faithful. You would bring them out every time. And then you went on, Father God. And after a while, you shut down and you weren't even speaking to the prophets, but you spoke to the prophets, Heavenly Father, in Isaiah 7. And you told us that we would have someone would come, Emmanuel. And you said that a virgin should bring forth a child, oh God. God, you are faithful down through the years, oh God. And Father God, Jesus Christ came and he walked the earth, Father God, and he was crucified and he died and he rose again, Father God. And you begin to bring us into the branch, into the vine, Father God. And you looked out of us and watched over us, oh God, and you gave us salvation through your son. For you said in your word that you gave your only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him would not perish, but they would have everlasting life. And oh God, we thank you, God, for you are faithful, God. You are faithful in the time of trouble, oh God. Yes, we look around us, Heavenly Father, and we see so much that is going on, but thank you, Lord, you're still faithful, God. You said that you would prepare a table before us in the presence of all of our enemies, oh God. And God, what is so great about that would you prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemies, God? The enemy may be standing out there, but you still have Jesus standing there and said, behold, he's standing, he knock at the door. And if you tell him to come in, he'll come in with supper. And oh God, what is so faithful about you, God, some of those enemies, oh God, may receive what he said and come in and sit down at the table, oh God. We thank you, Father, because you are so faithful, oh God. And even in sorrow, God, you are faithful, God. You what you created, Heavenly Father, you look out for. If a father on this earth, oh God, we know some of them don't, but some of them do, Father. He cares for his children, God. And when you stepped out of time into time and created us, oh God, you still care for us, Father, because what you create, you take care of, oh God. What you create, you love, oh God. What you create, you have mercy on God. Oh God, even some of us have gotten so low that we think that you don't care for us, but you are a faithful God. You are a just God, and you still care for us, oh God, and you're still calling us out of our sorrow, out of our pain, oh God. Some of us, oh God, has lost one person or two people, and some of us has lost our families and fires and tornadoes, oh God, and earthquakes, Father, but let us lift our eyes to the hills from which cometh our help, because God, you are stay, still faithful. Your son's say that we are the same yesterday, today, and he will be tomorrow. So this today, Father God, as I look to you, as I pray to you, Father God, you say your heart is hurt, Father God, because the people have forgotten that you are faithful to them and you will watch over them, oh God, and you will take care of them. No matter how high some people lift themselves up and the, the kings, but remember Pharaoh, oh God. Remember, Father God, that no matter who is great leaders, oh God. You say that they will hear your word and when they hear your word they will rejoice you for every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. 
Oh, God, this evening, this morning, Father, I pray that your people, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, will know that you are faithful in everything that goes on in their life. Just hold on, because if you lose your faith, Father, they lose their faith, Father, they will lose hope, oh, God, and hope is something, Father God, that you can't see, but hope is something when you hope, Father God, and can't see it. Oh God, then you will have patience, and patience is one of the fruit of the Spirit. So God, no matter what things is going on in their life, let them know, Father God, that you are faithful. Lord, you've already given them faith. Some people say, I just want a little more faith. But God, you have already given them faith. And all they have to do is grab hold to that faith and hold on, God. Because you haven't been lax in anything, God. You said you would be faithful and you will be faithful, oh God. And you will watch over your own. And you will protect your own. And you will keep your own. And so, God, no matter what goes on in the world, let us stand on that faithfulness of God. Because great is his faithfulness new mercies we see morning my morning father god and all we need he will provide for us and father god in the name of jesus christ we thank you right now we give you glory we give you honor and we give you praise oh god and we're going to stand in the faithfulness of god because it will never fail us Man will fail us, oh God, but God, our Father, in the name of Jesus, you will always be there for us. You will hold us up, Father God. And even the lowly who think they have gone so low, but you said high. But Father God, you look low. And oh God, you will help them. You will pull them out, Father God. Those who are hungry, God, you will feed them, Father God. Those who are lonely, you will be a friend to them, Father God. Oh God, those who are afraid, oh God, remember that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind, oh God, because you are faithful, God. You will always be faithful love to us, even until the end, oh God. And those that are in other countries taking your word, Father, let them just continue to take your word, continue to stand before the aisles. Some of them are in places where there are idol worship on every corner. Some of them are in places where there's witchcraft and evil works of darkness. But God, I thank you this morning that you are faithful God and great is your faithfulness. And oh God, we give you glory. We give you honor today. And we give you praise because, Father God, you will never leave us alone. You say, yea, though we walk through the valley in the shadows of death, we will fear no evil. But, God, you are with us. Oh, God, we thank you this morning. Oh, God, we bless your holy name this morning. And, God, we thank you that you are with us in any and everything that we are going through. You are joy, oh, God, in the midst of sorrow. You are faithful to give us joy, Father God. You are with us, oh, God, in pain, Father God. You are faithful to us in pain, oh, God. And we thank you for it right now, oh, God. And we bless your holy name this morning. Oh, God, my Father, as I stand in the gap as an intercessor, and I pray what you will, your heart wants to speak to the people, what your heart wants, oh, God. And you want to let them know, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that you are faithful, God, and you will never let us down. Because you create us, and you create us in your image, Father, and we are your children. And you will take care of our children, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray this morning. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory Hallelujah. Be. We bless Glory God. Be. Hallelujah. 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 We give God glory. We give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Wherever you are, hallelujah. Clap your hands, all ye people. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Shout to the Lord with the voice of triumph. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you, Mother Davis. Hallelujah, as she took us through the faithfulness of God. 
Hallelujah. 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 We give God praise. We'll give God glory for truly God is faithful. Hallelujah. And we're grateful this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. From Genesis to Revelation. Hallelujah. We see the faithfulness. Hallelujah. The commitment, the steadiness, the love, the mercy, the patience, the long suffering of the Lord our God. Hallelujah. We see how he moves in his people for his people. And God, we give you glory. Come on, give him glory and give him praise on this first Sunday in September. The Lord has kept us from January through August. He has allowed us to see another month and we give him praise and we give him thanks. Hallelujah. Praise your name, Jesus. So we're going to ask now if our own sister, uh, Minister Beverly, would come. Hallelujah. And lead us in song and in worship. Although we're on, listen, this may be technology and we may be on Zoom. But each and every one of us are somewhere in our homes. Hallelujah. And so, yes, turn your house now into a place of worship. Hallelujah. And come and let us worship the Lord our God. If you're in your car, turn your car into a place of worship. Hallelujah. Take that mobile temple, which is your body, and begin to give God glory, begin to give him praise, because everywhere we go, we are mobile temples. Hallelujah. And now all of us are mobile temples here gathered together on Zoom. And as Minister Beverly leads us in song, hallelujah, come on, we can sing in our own homes. Hallelujah. Sing wherever you are as she begins to minister in song. Come on, Minister Beverly, lead us in praise and worship, and we're going to sing along with you. Even if we are on mute here, we're not mute in our homes. Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God, you are so faithful and good, God. Hallelujah, God. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy. All together wonderful to me. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Yes, God. And I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross and I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross hallelujah so here I am to worship here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. 
You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Hallelujah. You're holy, holy. Oh Lord, you're holy, holy. Oh, you're holy, holy. Yes, you are, God. You're holy, holy. And you are wonderful, wonderful. Oh, Lord, you are wonderful. Oh, you're wonderful. And you are marvelous, Lord, you're marvelous. Oh, Lord, you are marvelous. Glory to God. You're marvelous, Lord, you're holy, holy God, you're holy, oh, you are holy. You're holy. Hey, yes, you are, God. You're ho holy. Hallelujah, God. Because I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. Hallelujah. So here we are to worship. Here we are to bow down. Here we are to say that you're our God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together one. Wonderful to us, hallelujah. Here we are to worship, here we are to bow down, here we are to say that you're our God, glory God, you're all together lovely. All together worthy, all together wonderful to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. We bless you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. You're all together. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We give God glory. We give him all the praise. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And even as she was singing, I was thinking about a, a, a grateful a Hezekiah Walker. The song said, Lord, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the things that you have done. Lord, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Not only for the things that you've done, but I'm grateful for the victories that I've won. Lord, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Hallelujah, that you have caused me to be more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. Lord, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the seed of faith that you've given unto me. Lord, I'm grateful. I'm thankful. I'm grateful. Hallelujah for the victory. I'm grateful for the blood of Jesus. I'm grateful for my salvation. I'm grateful that I'm able to see and have my whole being. God, I'm grateful. I'm thankful. Hallelujah. And we bless the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 When you have the love of Jesus in you, when you have a relationship with the Lord Jesus, it's hard not to praise him. It's hard not to give him glory. It's hard not to show him some appreciation. So clap your hands wherever you are. Hallelujah. 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 And give the Lord a shout of thanks. Hallelujah. Thank you. Tell the Lord you're grateful. Tell the Lord how much you appreciate him today because without him hallelujah we would be zombies walking in the earth realm hallelujah i don't know about you but before i came to jesus hallelujah i was amongst the living dead hallelujah and you'll catch on to that one day if you haven't already god we praise you hallelujah hallelujah you'll catch it hallelujah i was walking but I was dead in my sins, so guess what? I was a living zombie. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Who has translated us, who have given us his life, who we've given our life to him. Hallelujah. We are no longer amongst them, but we are amongst those living in the kingdom, being molded and formed by him. And we give the Lord praise and we give the Lord thanks. So we thank Mother Davis for her prayer this morning. We give praise and glory and thanks, Minister Beverly, for the songs, hallelujah, that she led us in. And now, hallelujah, it's that time. Hallelujah, praise Jesus. It's that time for us to sit at the table and dine. Hallelujah. Now, listen, I don't know about you, but when I sit down to a meal, I know we got a lot of technology and a lot of phones, but when I sit at the dinner table, I am focused on what I'm eating and what I'm drinking. The only thing I want to hear click, click is the sound of my fork. Mm. Y'all hearing me? As it may click against the plate as I'm eating my food. Everything else means nothing to me. And especially, hallelujah, when I'm sitting in one of my favorite restaurants. Don't interrupt me, are y'all hearing me? Don't interrupt me when I'm at my favorite restaurant, hallelujah, and eating some of my favorite food, hallelujah. So I'm saying right now, you need to tell people that right now I am at my favorite restaurant and I'm about to dine on my favorite food. Get out of my way. Do not interrupt me. Waiter, I don't need no more water. I got enough right here. Hallelujah. Don't come and ask me nothing because I'm focused on my meal. Hallelujah. And today, hallelujah, Hallelujah. The chef, boy, I do, if you want to call him, the chef of the word, the chef that's serving us our salad, the chef that's serving us our appetizer, the chef that's going to serve us our meal. Hallelujah. The chef that's serving us everything that we're going to need to be nourished this day is our own Apostle Jimmy C. Thompson. So let us welcome him. Hallelujah with the hand clap and with the focus on the word. Here you are, 
Apostle Jimmy C. Thompson, serve us up this word that you have from the Lord today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Prophet Karen. Amen. <clears throat> Minister Beverly and uh, Mother Davis. Hallelujah. Prayer warrior of the Lord. Um, thank you. To God be all the glory and the praise and the honor. Father, thank you today that as we gather around this medium of technology, you said that wherever you find your name recorded, that you would release the blessing. And I thank you, Lord God, that even around this medium of technology, we declare the name of Jesus, that name that is, that is above every name, the name that created everything, the name that everything answers to. We declare the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you for the blessing that is you, that is in the midst of us even now. Thank you for ears to hear. Thank you for hearts to receive. <clears throat> Thank you for a mouth to declare what you desire. And we give you praise and glory and honor for all in Jesus name. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you again <clears throat> to all um, that is uh, viewing us. Amen. I want to um, greet all uh, Minister Ali and all the saints there in El Salvador. Um, we greet you in Jesus joy um, on this amazing day of the Lord. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, I'm grateful to God um, in all that God is doing. Um, we are in a new month. And it, it, I tell you, it seems like the days are just going by so quickly. Um, it seemed like we just started in 2023, and here we are now. God is faithful. He's brought us through uh, from January until September, a brand new month. What's, in, what's interesting about September is that it is the ninth month uh, of the year in, um, in our calendar. <clears throat> it is the ninth month. And we know that in biblical numerology, the number nine is uh, fruitfulness or birthing. And so even as God has been faithful to bring us through um, August, which was the uh, eighth month, a month of new beginnings, uh, that God is faithful. I believe that even us seeing September, a date, a time of birthing and fruitfulness means that what God has promised in this new beginning, that we're going to begin to see the budding and the breaking forth of those things. I want to just encourage all of us as we are um, in this month that God is not a man that he should lie. I want to say that again. God is not a man that he should lie. One more time. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent every word that God has spoken will come to pass. The word of the Lord will never fall to the ground in terms of, um, of not in, in terms of not being fulfilled. Every time the word of God falls into a ground, it falls into the ground in order to cause the ground to bring forth. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I want to just encourage all of us that even as we're in this month, God has been faithful to bring us through this portion of the year. And he's brought us to this month of September. It is prophetically a sign and symbol that God, what he has spoken to us, that there is going to be a budding. There's going to be a bringing forth. I know we've had to go through some challenges. I know we've had to go through some tests. We've had to go through some trials, but I'm reminded of the scripture that's says that even though you go through the waters, even though you go through the floods, I am with you. I have allowed you to go through it. There is a purpose. And I think most of us, when we go through things, <clears throat> it is the blessing of the Lord to know the purpose of a thing. It is only when a people does not know the purpose for what, what, why they're going through things that it, the, it, the spirit of fear can come in to be, be begin to be a distraction um, to and on altar and also to try to cause your heart to fail because we do not know the purpose of a thing. But listen, even when we do not know the purpose of it, if we know the God of purpose. 
Hallelujah. And we keep our trust in him. God is faithful to bring us through whatever. The Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God never promised that we wouldn't go through things. He just said that many are the afflictions, but he has promised to bring us through. Hallelujah. And I want to just encourage those under the sound of my voice that God is faithful to do all that he has said. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Let me get to the text this morning. Praise God. Amen. I don't know um, how long I will be this morning. Uh, there are times when God uh, drops things in your spirit and there's a time when you prepare. Um, uh, and then there are other times, um, even though you prepare something, God will come in in, in the last hour and drop something in your spirit. Um, that he wants to um, declare, and that is one of those moments. And so uh, I just want to be um, faithful to the Lord, to what he has given me, and just to declare that. Uh, so we begin this morning, if you would go with me to Genesis chapter 12. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 12, <clears throat> and we will read, I'm going to read four verses there, and then we're going to flip over to Genesis chapter 13. And um, I'm going to read uh, three verses there. Hallelujah. The Lord dropped this in my spirit this morning. It's so new. I don't know that I really have a title for it. <laughs> Praise God. But we're just going to say what the Lord say. Genesis chapter 12, starting at verse 1. Now the Lord... It said unto Abram, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was 70 and five years old <clears throat> when he departed out of Haran. Now, if you will flip over to Genesis 13, <clears throat> and uh, starting at verse number 18. Uh, I'm sorry, verse number 14. And the Lord said unto Abram, after that lot was separated from him, lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where thou art northward and southward and eastward and westward for all the land which thou seest. To thee I will give it and to thy seed forever. And I will make of thy seed as the dust of the earth so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. And uh, verse 17 is where we end. Arise, walk through the land in the length of it and in the breadth of it, for I will give it to thee. Arise, walk through the land in the length of it and the breadth of it, and I will give it to thee. Uh, I want to talk this morning for a few minutes. Um, I didn't really have a title. And so we'll call it walking out the call of God. Walking out the call of God. As I said, we're in a new month. We're in a new day. We're in a new time. And we've been declaring uh, about this prophetic declaration of new. And I believe uh, Prophet Kern, when she was speaking, uh, was saying in terms of new that we've heard this terminology before of new. <clears throat> we've heard the prophetic words before of God saying new. And one of the things that we cannot do is we can never allow ourselves to become 
familiar um, whenever God speaks a word, even if it's something we've heard before, if it's a prophetic terminology, if it's a word, if it's a phrase that we've heard before, we can just like the scriptures, we cannot allow ourselves to become familiar in the sense of <clears throat> um, the spirit of familiarity causes our heart to be veiled from new. And so Whenever God says new, <clears throat> as a believer, there are always going to be seasons and times in our lives where as we walk with the Lord, that we are going to encounter this prophetic word and declaration of new. God says to Israel in Isaiah 43, he says to them, he says, remember you not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I do a new thing. Now it shall spring Fourth, So we've been talking about new. Now we in September, the month of birthing, the month of fruitfulness that there is as we receive this word of new and as we walk in this word of new that there is a springing forth, a bringing forth or a budding of the things that God has said to us. He says in Isaiah 43, he says that uh, this thing is going to be so new, it's going to be so radical, it's going to be so revolutionary, it's going to be so outside of what you are familiar with. He says that I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert, which suggests to us that there are things that God's going to do that we're going to see the manifestations of the hand and the works of God in places that typically or traditionally we wouldn't see an operation or we wouldn't see a manifestation out of. In other words, in the wilderness and rivers, i uh, see rivers in the desert and wilderness and all of us know that a wilderness is a dry place, that the ground is dry, uh, that it is a place that rivers is not um, a, 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 an abundance there. But God is saying, even in the places, this new thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to begin to do a work in places where that you have not seen this kind of manifestation that there has been a system in place, there's been a work in place, there have been things in place, uh, but, but now this thing is so new that I'm going to cause a radical move of rivers to come out of this place, even in the wilderness. And even as I'm talking, I want to encourage somebody that where you are right now, that where you are right now, you might be in this place, and it might be a whole system set up, but God is saying, I've already ordained. He said this set time, the set time, the favor of my people is now. And I've already ordained that even in this wilderness place, this test, this trial, the situation that you're in, God says, I'm going to cause a whole different manifestation, a whole different outcome, a whole different result that's going to come out of this. That's not only going to be a blessing to you but it's going to be a blessing to others. That's the whole DNA and nature of what we call new. That's why the challenge is for us when God says, I'm going to do a new thing. The challenge is we, the wineskin, the recipient of this word of new, we have to make sure that the wineskin becomes conducive to receive what God is going to do. In other words, we have to now move with the flow of God, with the word of God, so that we do not become stagnant, so that we do not be stay a wilderness but we become the waters that he said that he's going to do. Hallelujah, glory to God, hallelujah. And I wanna encourage somebody, listen, no matter where you are in this moment and you might be going through a test and a trial, hear the word of the Lord today. God says, even in that place, I'm gonna cause rivers to flow. I'm gonna cause rivers to flow. I'm gonna cause rivers to flow, hallelujah. Water is significant of nourishing water is significant of, of, of providing a, uh, uh, the moisture. Uh, water is significant because water is life, life sustaining. Um, and most of us know that even in times of fasting, that if you go on particular fast where you fast from food, 
Um, but if you if you don't have food, but if you're able to drink water, water can still nourish you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Water is also significant because waters are important. We know that the Bible says that whenever a seed is planted in the ground, God will water the seed. And when he, the water will cause the seed to be able to bring forth. Waters are significant because in a dry place, God says, I'm going to water <clears throat> this dry place and I'm going to cause it to bring forth. So he says we're in a new time and a new season. Oftentimes the challenge of receiving this prophetic declaration of God and this word of the Lord, this shifting word, uh, whenever the word says, when God says, I'm going to do something new, automatically we know that our season just changed, that whatever it was is no longer. And God is saying, what I'm saying to you now is what it is. Uh, and so we have to refrain from, he says, don't remember the former things. Don't even consider the things of old. If we're going to embrace and if we're going to walk in the new things of God, we cannot remember former things, nor can we consider the things of old. In other words, no matter what the situation was, don't even consider it. In other words, we have to fully invest now our time and our attention into what God is saying now without considering what was. Sometimes we look at when God says, I'm going to do a new thing. Sometimes we look at where we are or what's old. Like they said to Jesus, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Or like Mary, when the angel of the Lord came to her and said, you, you're going to have a child. And she says, well, how can I have a child? I, I, I haven't even known a man. In other words, how can what you're saying to me come to pass when I consider what is now? But the prophetic word of the Lord to us today in a new month, a new day, a new time, a new season, that we are not to consider what things was, that we are to fully embrace who God is and what God is doing now in order to walk in the power and the strength of it. And so as we look at our text today in Genesis, this is the call of God to Abraham. And I want to just take a couple of minutes and just kind of walk this word here. Uh, the Bible says in Genesis 12 that God comes to Abram. And he says to Abram, he said, I want you to get out from your family, from your uh, country, from your kindred. Now, the call of God to Abraham was both significant and it was extraordinary. God's telling him, he says, I want you to leave your home, your country, leave out away from your kinsmen, from your father's house. He says, and I, I want you to go to a land that I'm going to show you. Now, how radical is this new thing to Abram? Because this word to Abraham, God says, I want you to leave everything that you are familiar with. The word was so radical uh, in the sense that God did not even tell Abraham what the land would look like. He says, I want you to give, I'm going to show you as you go what this land is going to look like. So when we look at this call of God to Abram, this call was both emotional and geographical. The call to, of God to Abraham was both emotional and geographical. You said, well, what, what do you mean by that? Abram is having to leave everything that has to do with his birth, his identification, everything that has been his susten sustenance, Everything that he's derived wisdom and knowledge and understanding from, he's having to walk away from this place. And you and I can imagine that having to leave his entire family, that there had to be an emotional attachment. There was an emotional component to this because Abram's having to leave his father's house, his family, and all that he knows. 
There's a ge geographical component to this because God's telling him, I want you to get out away from them. You're going to go to another land. I'm going to show you what, what this land is. And I want to encourage us today that if we're going to really embrace new and we're going to embrace and walk in this prophetic declaration that God uh, and this opportunity and this place and point of access into the next dimension, the next uh, 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 phase of what God is doing in our life, that we have to consider that everything that the call of God comes in, on our life to do, that it's going to touch everything about your life. You say, what do you mean by that? It's going to touch your entire life. If we obey what God tell us to do, and then it does not touch you in your emotions, it does not touch you in terms of moving from a place, then you have not received the call of God. <laughs> it's going to register in your emotions. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So he tells him to get away from this. And we see in this that there was a sense of urgency. Uh, to Abram, when God told him, I want you to get away from uh, your father's house. Abraham, Abram didn't have time, a man, to sit there and contemplate about it. He didn't have time to linger around. He didn't have time to go to um, other relationships to kind of take a consensus um, to say, you know, this is what the Lord's saying. What do you think about it? Um, Abraham didn't have time for that. God moved upon Abram with a sense of urgency. Because how many know that in times when God give you a word like that, when the call of God comes to you and there's something God tells you to do, that you have to move in it quickly. You have to move in it quickly because the longer you delay, the more time the enemy has to talk to your mind to try to talk you out of doing what God says. There are times when God speaks to you to do thus and so. You have to move quickly. You don't have time to meditate on it. When you know it's the voice of the Lord, it is time to move on that. Because listen, there is a timing, there is a rhythm, there is a flow in God. Hallelujah. And we have to move with the flow of God. And I, I just want to just reiterate that because as the spirit of God gave me this word this morning, he said to me, even in the emotional component and the geographical one, that for some people, uh, uh, for all of us, brother, when we begin to obey the Lord in this season, there is going to be a manifestation. There is going to be a weight or impact on our obedience to God on your emotional uh, state that there's some things you're going to have to detach from. Because listen, it's when things are familiar to you, when you step into a new place, that is one of the challenges. It first registers in your emotions. And some people do not realize how attached we are to former states, former places, former mindsets, and former situations. Emotionally, we are attached there. And there has to be, if we're going to obey God in this moment, there is a, a, a detachment that has to happen in our emotions. That's why he said, don't even consider the former things. Don't even think about the thing. Think about the things of old. You got to obey God and move quickly. We read also in the Gospels, the Bible says that when Jesus called the disciples, they didn't linger. They didn't delay. The Bible says when Jesus called them, immediately they left their nets to follow him. Huh. Now, now, in taking Abram from his family, the promise of the Lord was that God was commissioning Abram to be a blessing to an entire world, to an entire people. Just walk with me for a moment. I won't be long this morning, but I really sense the spirit of the Lord in this. As we are embracing this new time, this new day, this new season in the Lord, we are going to be experiencing a range of emotions. We are going to be experiencing a range of circumstances. That's why the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord is faithful to deliver us out of them all. All of us as a son of God, 
we have a call of God on our life. There's something that God has called and commissioned and given for all of us to do in the earth. And one of the things we have to take um, notice of with Abram, who the Bible calls him the father uh, of us all, the father of faith, is that we are going to have to be willing to walk away from things. We're gonna to have to be willing to detach from things. We're gonna to have to be willing for God to detach or take things away from us in order to walk into this new. But there's a purpose and a reason. Then we see, just walk with me for a moment. Then we see in, verse, in chapter 13, the Bible says that as Abraham obeyed God and he left from out his father's house, Lot went with him. Now, God never said for Lot to go with Abram. So no doubt when Abram began to declare or speak to his father in his father's house that he was leaving, um, I, I uh, just uh, out of understanding, believe that Lot probably heard the conversation and maybe because of his connection with Abram, wanted to go with Abraham. And Abraham did not stop him, although God never told Abraham to take Lot. He says, you go. So here we are in chapter 13, where, um, and most of us know the story, the Bible says that there arose a contention between um, Lot's herdsmen and Abram's. And so Abraham puts this ultimatum to, I, uh, to uh, Lot and says to him, listen, we're brothers, we're, we're family. There's no need for us to quarrel. Look, look out at the land, go and see which way you wanna take. If you go to the right, I'll go to the left. You go to the left, I'll go to the right. And Lot chose a land to go. Once Lot leaves from Abram, here comes the voice and the word of the Lord to Abram again. which means Lot was a type of separation. Now God separated Abram from his father's house. Lot ends up with Abram, God never told Lot, no touch never told Abram to take Lot. And here God brings a separating again for the purpose of purifying what he initially said to him in Genesis 12. And I think all of us have been in this place when we've set out to obey God and there's some things that have been attached to us that was not the perfect will of God. And we've had to walk in a place and found our place in a time where it seems like this contention uh, rose up and God only allowed the uh, contention to rise up this discomfort because there was a, another severing that God is doing in our life in order to purify again the original initial call of what he said to us. And I wanna say this to somebody under the sound of my voice. If you witness and you're feeling this tension, this pain, or this separation, amen, I don't want you to become upset. Don't become disgruntled, amen. Don't, don't be worried, amen, about it. Just understand that the original call, the original mandate, what God initially said to you about your life, God is stewarding this. And God is bringing you back into a place now to walk into this call, this place with God. Hallelujah. The Bible says, God says to Abram, he says, now look, lift up your eyes. All that you see, he says, I'm going to give it to you and you'll see. He says, lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes and see. Let me just park here for a moment. Hallelujah, glory to God. This word is for all of us. And I want you to just prophetically, just lift up your eyes for a minute. Every place that you could see, every place that you could see, I want you to know God's gonna give you what you can see. And the Lord told me to declare this, Lord, anoint my eyes to see everything. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Lord, anoint my eyes to see everything you've given me. This is a time and a season as we're in this new place with God, where God has brought us out from a place, when there are things that God has separated from us. We are in this moment with God. The prayer is, Lord, like he said to Abram, Lord, anoint my eyes to see everything that you've given me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You say, well, why am I praying and asking God to anoint my eyes to see? Because the Bible says God told Abram, he says, now arise, walk through the length and the breadth of the land and I will give it to you. Let me say this to you. Unless God anoints your eyes and opens your eyes to see the land, you cannot walk on and you cannot walk through what you are not able to see. Let me say it again. You are not, you and I are not able to walk through and walk on what we are not able to see. And our prayer in this prophetic moment of all things new, God doing new things. We cannot consider where we were. We cannot consider what has been. We have to now trust God to see what is this new place so that we can walk through it now. The length and the breadth of it. You and I have been given a promise. Hallelujah. 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 We, there's a call of God on your life. There's an assignment of God on your life. And I want to speak to the Abrams under the sound of my voice that you and I have had to walk through trials. We've had to walk through things where we've had that's been separated and pulled from us. And I want you to know that even in the pain of the separation, that it was in the eyes of God a sanctification, a setting apart. Because there's some things that had to be stripped from us in order for us to lay hold on this next phase, this next move, the next in God. There's some things that we had to walk through in order to get to this place. It's not always easy. It's not always easy. I can imagine it was painful for Abram to leave everything that he ever knew, everything that was familiar. Watch this. Even the Bible says he had to walk away from his natural inheritance. And I want to say this to somebody that God has called you. And even uh, those uh, under the sound of my voice, some of you, God has pulled you out from your father, your natural father's house. Some of you have had to walk from, from out of your natural birthplace surroundings. And it has been challenging to you because everything you know, everything you've been familiar. And if you like me, glory to God, I felt like my, my beginning, middle and end was in that place. But God had a different plan. God had a different purpose and had to walk away from a birthplace. Had to walk away from a natural inheritance. But what I did not realize and what we do not realize is the Bible says in 1 Peter that even though we walk from a natural or we walk away from a natural inheritance, the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 1 that we have obtained an inheritance in God that's incorruptible, that's undefiled, and it's reserved in heaven for us. And it does not fade away. And that it is the power of God that keeps us through faith. And I want you to know that it was an inheritance that Abram obtained from God that was incorruptible. It was undefiled. It was reserved in heaven for him. It did not fade away. And because his faith in God and he moved at the voice of the Lord and walked away as God told him, he received another inheritance that was incorruptible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many times the enemy tempts us with walking into, walking into the things of God by causing us to look at what we're walking away from. But I want to challenge you in this season, don't look at what you're walking away from. Look at what God's causing you to walk into. There's something greater on the other side. Hallelujah. There's something great. He said to Abram, he said, I want you to rise, walk through the length and the breadth of the land, and I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give it to you. I'm almost done, but let me let me just uh, reiterate this here. There is a call of God, and even as the Spirit of the Lord dropped this word in my spirit this morning, 
and said to tell my people that the call of God on their life, that even the feelings of in your emotions, um, the, the, the battle of the thoughts in your mind, and even the having to move or relocate, move. And sometimes when we talk about geographically, for some, there is a physical geographical move. For others, when we embrace the word of God, we move from where we are. We move from one mindset into another mindset. So we're so it is still a moving, um, uh, but yet and still uh, the enemy desires us to stay there. And one of the things that Abram had to resist, he had to resist falling into the same situation his father fell into. Because the Bible says of his father that God spoke to Haran too. And Haran was in process of progress. And even as Haran, Abram's father was moving forward because Haran, uh, 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 his son died uh, because Abram's uh, uh, brother died. Uh, um, uh, I'm sorry, because his brother died his father moved to a place called Haran, which was the same name of Abram's brother and his father's son. The devastation of the loss of the son so impacted Abram's father that he settled in that place. There are times when we go through seasons of tests and trials and challenges. And the enemy will cause us or try to attempt us to stay locked into this place as if this is all. And try to get us to settle in this place. But I want to talk to you this morning. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. This is not the time to settle here. No matter what God you have had to walk through, just understand that you walk through it because God pulled you and I through it. Anything that we walk through says in the eyes of God, there's something on the other side of this. And I want us to know in this new season that no matter where you are right now in this moment, no matter what is going on, that there's something else on the other side of this. Do not allow where you are to keep you captivated. Because the moment, amen, Abram's father uh, settled in this place, the word of the Lord comes to Abram. And Abram had to resist the same temptation that happened to his father. And he had to walk from this place to obey God. And the Bible says of Abram that the reason Abram had to walk in the length and the breadth of the land was because number one, God promised Abraham seed and he promised him land. God knew down through the generations that the children of Israel was going to inhabit the same land that he told Abraham to walk the length and the breadth of. You say, Apostle, what are you trying to say? I'm trying to tell you that where you are right now is not the finality of the plan and purpose of God for your life. That the call of God on your life is bigger than what you've had to walk through. And I want you to stay focused on who God is, who God is in you, and who God you are in God. To know that the power of God is so great that God factored in every part, every phase of our life. And still, He there is a call. There is still another dimension. There is still another phase of the call and the purpose of God on your life. That you are not just walking through this on your own. You're not walking through this for yourself. There's somebody that God has given you responsibility for that is dependent on you walking through the length and the breadth of the land that God called you, you to. I was listening um, even as Mother Davis was praying and she talked about Jesus. The Bible says that Jesus came to earth. We know that he is the word of God in flesh. Hmm. That everything Jesus did his whole life, he was a type of Abraham that walked through the length 
and the breadth of the land in order to give an inheritance, in order to establish an inheritance for us who will come along. And he said to his disciples when he commissioned them, he says, <clears throat> these things that I do, the signs and wonders and miracles that I do, he says, these things that I do, you're going to do them and you're going to do greater. But it, it, it takes somebody walking through the land to acquire the land so that the seed will follow. And I want to say to you, the Spirit of God, <clears throat> the Spirit of God said to me that it is the grace of God. In the call of God, <clears throat> there is a grace from God. That in the call <clears throat> is the grace of God that covers an individual's life, that gives us the full measure of days according to the promise of the Lord. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. That God gives you the wisdom, God gives you the ability, and God anoints your feet to keep moving, to, to expand the whole entire length of the call and the purpose of God for your life. So the assignment, the promise of God, the inheritance, let me tell you this, even in Deuteronomy chapter 11 and 21, the Bible says God will multiply your days in order to enjoy the full measure of the promise. So as you're listening under the sound of my voice, and I'm, I'm almost done, obeying the call of the Lord, walking out the call of the Lord. There are many things that we had to go through. The Bible says even of Joseph, that Joseph had to walk through adversity because of the call, because of the promise, because of what God had committed to Joseph. The Bible says in Psalm 105 that until the time of Joseph's word come to pass, came to pass, it was the word of the Lord that tried Joseph. And I want to say to all of us, as sons of God, that the call of God on your life, that there are many things that we will have to walk through. But I want to encourage you that God is faithful. And I want you to understand that the power of the call of God upon your life, the grace of God that comes through the call, empowers us in, from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet. God will empower us to walk through the length and the breadth of the land. You said, what do you mean, Apostle? The things that we suffer in life and the things that we go through is not always about us. There are things that you and I will go through in this walk with the Lord that has nothing to do with you, but it's about who you're walking this through for. There are other people that you are paying the price for now that's going to be the recipient and the benefit of what you are walking through now. And God is faithful. He will not call, allow you to fail. God is faithful. He will not allow you to fall. God is faithful. He will not allow you to, to, to give up and give out because he has anointed and appointed you and I to walk through the length and the breadth. Because there's somebody that we're walking through this land for. There's somebody that's going to receive. And I want to speak to somebody under the sound of my voice that, that even this hard time, hard place, this land, Abram had to follow the leading of the Lord because he did not know this land. And I think all of us understand that when you walk with the Lord, we walk in a place that we have to follow God. As he said to Joshua, you've not been this way before. The situation circumstances that we come through, we've not been that way before, and we have to trust the Lord as we walk through this. But just know <clears throat> that every place the sole of your feet set, that God's given it to you. And as your feet walk through the length and the breadth of it, God is establishing that place, that land, for somebody else that's coming behind you. 
There's an anointing and the grace of God that's coming upon your life like you, you have never had before. Because even though God allows us to walk through these times, and Abram had to go, he had to walk through difficulty. Joseph had to walk through difficulty. But at the end of Joseph coming through, walking through the length and the breadth of it, Joseph became the provision for his family. Because God had already ordained Egypt to be the place of provision for Joseph's family. And I want to encourage you in this new month of new beginnings uh, and, and this ninth month of birthing and bringing forth that God's going to bring forth everything he said to you. I want to encourage you to walk by the power of God. It is the call of God on your life. Do we understand everything? Absolutely not. And there are times God will not tell us everything. That is a time we have to trust him. He said to Abram, he said, I want you to go and I'm going to show you. So Abram had to walk by faith, step by step, to trust the Lord. And God was faithful to Abram. And as he was to Abram, so will the Lord be to you and I. Walking out the call of God. I want to encourage you today as we walk through be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Even as we walk through, just understand God is empowering your feet. It's not by power, it's not by might, but it's by the spirit of the Lord. There's, there is a land that you and I each have to walk through. <clears throat> God will bless us. We require the anointing of God and the gift of God as we walk through these things for other people. But there's somebody that God has given you charge. That as you obey the Lord, as you are that Abram and you walk through this place with the Lord. I pray that God would anoint our eyes to see the fullness of the land. That God would anoint us our feet that every place the sole of your feet will set, that God gives this new place into your hands. And just know that you're not walking this in vain, that there are other people that is going to benefit from what you are walking through with the Lord. Let me say that again. There are other lives, there are other souls Abram had to walk through because the Bible says in the blessing of the Lord to Abram, he said, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless your seed. Your seed is going to occupy the land. And I want to say to somebody under the sound of my voice, you've been praying for your family. You've been praying for loved ones. You've been declaring the blessing and the favor, and you've been desiring for God to move on behalf of your family. I want, I want to encourage you, keep walking through the land, that as you walk through it, God is going to validate, God's going to solidify, God's going to establish this land, this place, so that your seed have a place to reside with God. Father, thank you today. I give you praise, I give you glory and honors. We trust you for this word. I thank you that this is the time and the season, even as you did with Isaiah in chapter six. Your word says that in the year that King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord. He was high and lifted up. That even in the midst of that time and season with Isaiah, that it, you, you was bringing him to this place because there was a new assignment. There was a new uh, uh, measure. Lord, and, uh, and, and place that you had for Isaiah. There was a people that you were calling Isaiah to, and Isaiah had to walk through this time in order to get to this place where he saw you high and lifted up. I thank you, Lord God, that even, as, even in this month, and I pray for the people of God, that as you are bringing us through times and seasons, that we would stay focused on you, that we would continue to follow you because of the call, that we would not look at um, the adversity that we would not attribute this to the enemy, 
But as your word says in Psalm 105, until the time of the manifestation of the word, the word of the Lord tried Joseph. And I thank you that it has been your word that have tried us. Father, we passed the test. And Father, you're bringing us into this new place and you're causing us to look up and see. I pray that our eyes be open to see, Lord, the land, let it not be in obscurity. Lord, I pray that you would anoint our feet even the more to cover the full measure of the land. You are so good that you even anoint us the balance of our days to walk out the purpose. And I pray, Lord God, I plead the blood against the enemy of distraction, every enemy of delay in the name of Jesus, that Lord, that every day, every moment be uh, given to walk out the fullness of your plan for our life, that we not miss or lose anything, nor our seed. To you be the glory and the honor and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. And in part, and I want to say to all of us, this is the hour now. Possess the land. God bless you. I give it back to Prophet Karen McCray. Amen. 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 What a word. What a word. What a word. What an excellent meal that we have had today. We have supped divinely. Hallelujah. And we give the Lord praise and we give him thanks. If you are watching this broadcast currently, or if you're watching it uh, after the fact, we dare not leave here without offering the call to you. Because that word that you have just heard is a call, a call to detach yourself from your old mindset, detach yourself from an old system, Detach yourself from an old way of life. God is calling you today to attach yourself to him, to attach yourself to the kingdom of the living God. Attach yourself to that which is new. Are you tired of that system of dryness that you're in? Are you tired of lack? Are you tired of pain? Are you tired of despair? Are you tired of hopelessness? Are you tired of immorality? Are you tired of just matter of fact? Are you tired of having all of this prosperity, but yet there's a hole still in your soul that needs to be filled? God is calling you from out of that system into a new system where the river of life is flowing where you will flourish. And only the Lord Jesus Christ can fill that hole that is in your soul. If that is you today, many of us have been in that place. The call, this is your initial call. And if that is you today, you can receive the Lord Jesus Christ. You can receive this new you can receive this fountain. You can receive it today. And you say, how can I do that, prophet? Well, easy. It's called confession. All you've got to do is open your mouth and confess Jesus as Lord. That's one. Open your mouth, confess that Jesus of Nazareth is Lord. Number two, believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus of Nazareth from the dead and the Bible says you will be saved. That, that's it. Then it says you've got to understand that what you've done, it may seem foolish, but that's one of the things that God does. But the Bible says with your heart, you have believed unto righteousness and with the mouth, you have made a confession unto salvation. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And if you've done that today, if you do that right now, you are saved. Then the next thing that you need to do is attach yourself, okay, to some pastors, to shepherds who will help lead and guide you. Now, unlike Abraham, Abraham did not have a shepherd. He had God. But God has put shepherds in the earth realm 
to help us, huh? Mm -hmm. To disciple us, to, to help us because what we said, we're detaching from these emotions and geographic and it's painful, it's not easy. The Lord has put some support in the earth realm to help you through this. And so the Lord has assigned some shepherds, okay? And today we're offering to you Kingdom Deliverance Ministries International, our shepherds, Jimmy C. Thompson, Natalie Thompson, they are our apostles, they are prophets, they are our pastors, and they're saying we're open to help you, come on, as you attach yourself into this new way of life. And you say, well, how can I connect with you? I'm glad you ask. <laughs> you can partner with us. It's on our Facebook page. It's on our YouTube page. It's on our website. Our website, KD Ministries. Put that in, kdministries.us. And when you go to that website, there's a contact form where you can fill out your name and your information and you can send it to us. If you don't want to fill that out, then there's a telephone number. Call us at 410-303-6281. Hallelujah. Thank God for technology. Because there are many ways that now you can connect with a ministry. Are you hearing me? Thank you. And for those of us who are already in Christ Jesus, the call came to us today, hallelujah. God is calling us to a higher place in him. All righty now, God is calling us to a higher place in him. Thank you for that word because once you come to Christ, there are different levels of detachment as the Lord begins to reveal to you those things that you need to detach yourself from. And all of us have to detach ourselves from something. So let's give the Lord a hand clap for those who receive Christ. Let us give a hand clap to ourselves who will detach ourselves from some things that we no longer need to be attached to and attach ourselves to what the word of the Lord says we need to attach ourselves to. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. And now, attach yourself to this new way of giving. Hallelujah. Great praise God. Because though we're online, the Lord has made it so and given man ooh, technology so that now we can give to support the ministry. Because even though we're not in a building, we will be back in a building soon and very soon. There is still a work that we're doing in the kingdom. We're helping in San Salvador. Uh, we just get back to school and we did book bags and we have the children. So there's still mission work. There's still things that we're doing to help people, not only abroad, but within the community. And not only that, the Lord is calling us and has told us to bring our what our tithes and our offerings to the temple, what that there might be meat. So sometimes there are people in the kingdom who fall on hard times and they need help. And there are people in the church, we fall on hard times, God, we got to come to the church and the church will help us with food, clothing, and what have you. All right. Mm. So uh, you can give Kingdom Deliverance Ministries. There's an app called Give Lify. You can give through what? Cash app, KDMI the city. Are you hearing me? You can uh, write a check and you can mail it, the address. So yes, all right. So there are many ways to give and we're asking you to please give. And for those who are in Christ, you know that you still should be bringing your tithes and offering. And the Lord loves a cheerful giver. So when you give, what? Give cheerfully, not begrudgingly, and watch the blessings of the Lord. Even as Apostle was talking about Abram, he had to leave all of what he had, but God blessed him with even more. And Abram gave tithes. And so guess what? We give tithes. We give offerings. 
because this is what the Lord has asked us to do. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the tithes and offerings that are being sowed into the kingdom. We thank you for every seed that is being sowed. And we thank you, Lord, that as the seed is watering, it flourishes and it brings forth fruit in the earth realm. We thank you, Lord, that whatever seeds we're planting as we tithe, God, we thank you for that at the time that it should come forth, just like oranges and apples in the earth realm, so will our seed manifest itself to the glory of you, God. Lord, we thank you. We bless you. Hallelujah. For all of the tithes, for all of the offerings that are being sown on this day in Jesus' name. And the people of God say, amen, amen, and amen. We bless God. We bless God. Uh, as far as Kingdom Deliverance Ministries, this week, we have our prayer time uh, at 12 p.m. and at 6 a.m. Or you can say we have prayer at 6 a.m. and at 12 noon on the prayer line Monday through Friday. We have our Thursday evening prayer at 7 p.m. And on Tuesday at 7 p.m., we have Kingdom Academy. And for some who may not know what Kingdom Academy is, Kingdom Academy is another way of saying we have Bible study. Amen. But we call it Kingdom Academy at the kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So those are our announcements. We ask that uh, all of us govern ourselves accordingly. Uh, for those of you who are uh, maybe first time listening, connect with us on our YouTube channel, also Kingdom Deliverance Ministries, and you can go back and look at some of our previous episodes of uh, not only our morning worship service, but of Kingdom Academy, and you can see some of the teaching and the richness of the food that we receive at KDMI. So before I go, is there a word that you want to say, Prophet Natalie Thompson? If not, then we turn it back over to you, Apostle, but we open it up to uh, our leaders to share with us anything that they have to say. Um, and then, Apostle, you will close us out. Thank you with the benediction. Amen. We just give glory and honor to God for the service on today and for the word that was sent to us on today, straight from the throne room of God. We're just so honored today for each and every one of you to join us. And we thank and praise God on this first Sunday, how we rose to give God glory and honor and praise. I'm grateful for each and every one of you. And we're just looking for great things in this month. As we continue on in this month, we we are looking for great and wonderful and mighty things from our Lord. Continue to lift him up. Apply the word that you have heard on today. You might think you have lost some things, but we're never at a loss. God will meet the need, whatever it is. And whatever you give up for the kingdom, God will, he will return it a hundredfold, even better. I believe it and I know it to be true. Thank you and God bless. Praise God. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Prophet Karen, again. And I want to take a moment to honor Prophet Natalie. Amen. Glory to God. Woman of God. Amen. Praise God. And really thank God for her life and um, and for what God is doing. Um, and for everybody, um, God is so amazing. And uh, even as we are in this time and season, um, just to remember that God, no matter what um, we are, or where we walk, or, or how we've had to walk, um, God is not unrighteous to forget. And as Prophet Karen said, with, with Abram, that God blessed him and replenished and gave to him. And there's such a, there's a fulfillment that's coming, even with this birthing, God bringing forth 
um, there is a fulfillment. In other words, there's a satisfaction. God never uh, has us walk away from something without bringing a fulfillment in that place. Because there has to be a completion. There has to be something there so that we, the Bible says, be full and entire. And so I want to just encourage us as we obey the Lord, God is faithful. So I just wanted to create, may the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance and may he give you peace. May the Lord our God bless you, increase you more and more, you and your children. And may the Lord our God bless you as he has promised you. Have an amazing rest of the day in God. We love you. Until the next time, God bless you. What are you waiting for? It's time to rise. What are you waiting for? Go and possess it. What are you waiting for? It's time to rise. Possess the land, possess the land, possess the land. What are you waiting for? It's time to rise. What are you waiting for? It's time to get up. What are you waiting for? It's time to go for it. Possess the land, possess the land, possess the land. Possess the land, possess the land, possess the land. Possess the land, possess the land, possess the land. For the it's just for the taking. 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 For the king of self violence. And the violence take your mouth off. The king of self violence. And the violence take your mouth off. It's just for the taking. 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 For the king of self violence. And the violence take your mouth off. It's the king of self violence. And the violence take your mouth off. It's the king of self violence. And the violence take your mouth off. The king is up the fire, and the fire is taking up the fire, the king is up the fire, and the fire is taking up the fire, the king is up the fire, and the fire is taking up the fire, the king is up the fire, and the fire is taking up the fire, the king is up the fire, and the fire is taking up the fire,